How's it going guys? In this video we're looking at the trade that went down this morning with the Boston Bruins acquiring Rick Nash from the New York Rangers. Uh, probably the biggest trade so far of the deadline. They gave up a ton, so we're going to see right now um, if it was worth it. Uh, my first thought, I think it's a good trade for both teams. Uh, Rick Nash is still a very solid top six winger. Um, Boston gave up a lot, but still nothing too crazy. Um, definitely like the first round pick it was like the most value that they gave up. And I think, you know, he'll obviously help them in their playoff push. They look very good this year. So here's Rick Nash in an HL18. He actually doesn't have as much value as I expected. Uh, 33 years old, 82 overall, making 7.8 million. So probably his salary is one of the reasons his value is lower. Um, still considered a second line winger, obviously first overall pick back in 2002. And his contract expires this year. So after this year, the contract doesn't matter. And I think Boston sees him as a rental anyway. Also, uh, the New York Rangers are actually retaining 50% on him. Just to make the trade work in terms of salary. Um, also, too, with the other parts of the trade, I think they have to retain 50. Or maybe just to make the trade better for Boston. So, like I was saying, they actually have a huge package here for Rick Nash. Uh, the thing with the most value is definitely the 2018 first. Uh, especially in a deep draft. And they're in a tough division. Like, they could go out first round if they play Toronto or Tampa. Depending on, like, how the standings end up. Um, they also gave up a 2019 seventh round pick. I have no idea, like, was it that close to the trade? And then New York was just like, you know what? Everything looks good, but we want a 2019 seventh. Like, I don't understand how that happens. Um, other parts of this trade, they actually give up Ryan Spooner, who's still a decent player, 25 years old, 81 overall. Uh, he's got high top six four potential there, making 2.8 million, I believe, for one more year, yeah. So I think Boston probably felt like they weren't gonna resign him. One of those players who kind of just lost a spot in the lineup, not quite good enough to be a second liner, not quite good enough defensively to be a third liner, kind of too good to be on the fourth line. Um, so they decided to include him in the trade. Um, also with him is Matt Bolesky, who's just there for salary dump. Um, obviously, he's getting paid way too much. 29 years old, Saints and overall, uh, making $3.8 million as a fourth liner. But they actually are retaining 50% um, on that trade. So they got rid of him, but they're still going to pay him, like, what is it, $1.9 million. Obviously, that's better than the full 3.8, especially... Um, well, I guess for New York, they can just bury him. They're only going to have like 900k kind of against the cap. Uh, Boston will still have 1.9 million, but still, uh, that is better than 3.8. As well, they actually added a pretty solid defensive prospect, Ryan Lindgren. Now, he's a college prospect, so he's not in this game, but he was a second overall pick. Um, from what I can understand, like just looking at tweets and stuff, people think he's probably going to be like a top six defenseman. So uh, the closest thing I think would be Jeremy Lozon. Uh, I think he's the same age as well, 20 years old. 64 overall, uh, second round pick in 2015, medium top six. Uh, Lindgren's a second round pick, 20 years old, should be a top six D-man. So this is pretty similar value, I think. Um, now, New York would have too many players, apparently. So we'll just take back a really, like, player that has no value, doesn't matter. Uh, so Crawley here, 20, 57, 770k. That won't affect any of the value. So look at the trade here. Boston is giving up way too much for Rick Nash. I thought the trade is pretty fair, honestly, when I first saw it, but... In game, I feel like New York's definitely gonna say yes to this because, yeah, the value. Oh wow, New York's saying no. Uh, the amount of salary you want us to retain is not good. So the value here is like double, maybe triple on Boston's side, but New York's not fine with attaining the 3.9 million, which is so dumb because it's just for like one year. I mean, we are at the start of the season for this trade post the deadline, but still. Um, so we'll see here. We try reducing this salary. Um, maybe New York will say yes. I'm actually really surprised. They said no. We'll try like 31% there. Um, maybe they say yes now. Trade still rejected. Wow, that's crazy. So the value is triple on Boston's side, but New York does not want to retain that salary. Um, probably or take on Bolesky, which is, I think is why this trade's pretty good for Boston. They get Nash. They get rid of half Bolesky's contract. We're not going to keep Spooner anyway. And yeah, that's really surprising. Like the value there, triple on Boston's side and... Uh, New York's still not having any of it. And we're now going to try the trade from the Rangers' perspective. And as you can see here, they're actually interested in a bunch of New York's players, which makes sense, obviously. Uh, they have champion status, so they probably want to boost their team as much as they can. So we're going to retain the 50% here on Rick Nash. I have a feeling like this trade's still going to get rejected, which means both teams are rejected, which is really strange. Um, I think, too, maybe the trade quickly being on hard might play a factor. Maybe if he was on medium for the last trade, they wouldn't have cared so much about the salary retention. Not entirely sure, but... I uh, will see here what happens. So we want the 2018 first, the 2019 seventh, which I still think is so jokes. Uh, Ryan Spooner, Matt Bolesky, and then I think we're going, uh, who was it, Lozon to replace uh, Ryan Lindgren. So uh, whereas there's Spooner, there's Lozon, and then Bolesky I think has the least amount of value on the Bruins. That might be another reason why it was so hard to get that trade to go through. So just added everything there. Have to make sure uh, Boston's still retaining 50% of Bolesky's contract. Um, again, it's pretty funny when, like, they're just paying, basically, to lose half of a guy's contract. That's when you know it's a bad sign. I remember what happened to 
everyone thought it was a bad signing. Like, he had one okay year, and they gave him $3.8 million. And before that, he was just career fourth liner. It made no sense. And then who do we add? Camphor or no? I forget who we added. I think, uh, I honestly forget who we added already. We'll just add this guy, maybe. Just roster spot, nothing else. Uh, so, yeah, look at the value. We do not have nearly enough value here to make this trade with Boston. Easy reject from them. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Both teams rejected, which I mean... I guess kind of means it's fair. I know a lot of people think Boston gave up too much, but honestly, I think Rich Nash is still a very solid player. will definitely help them um, in their Stanley Cup pursuit. We'd love to hear what you guys think about this trade in the comments section. Do you think New York won? Do you think Boston won? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, leave the thumbs up. Stay tuned for more trade videos, guys. going to have them out for all the major trades uh, over the next 24 hours. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Goodbye.